Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 22nd Lebanon City Council meeting. Our first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Jones, will you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll move on to the roll call of members. Madam Clerk, we call the roll. Councilman Kincaid. Present. Councilman Campbell. Here. Councilman Jones. Present. Councilman Roberts. Here. Councilman Copeland. Absent. Absent. Councilman Wheat. Here. Councilman Fleming. Absent. Absent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Any uh, changes or edits to the, to the minutes? No, sir. Okay, we entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion we approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Um, I know we have quite a bit of work to do tonight, but uh, I wanted to bring up um, Steve Kuhnberger from the Waterford Institute. This isn't on your agenda, but we had a meeting on Friday, um, and we wanted to uh, give him a chance to kind of speak to the council about an upcoming event that would benefit the community. So I just wanted to give Steve a chance to introduce what he's doing, and, and absolutely. Yes. Sure. My name is Steve Kuhnberger with the Waterford Research Institute. Bring that up here. There we are. Uh, the Waterford Research Institute is a non for profit focused in on early literacy, math, and science. Uh, we've been working in the state of Indiana for um, about since 2003. With hey, school Steve, can you speak in the microphone? They really, really got to hear you. Yep, there you go. A little bit closer? Better. There you go. All right, thank you. Um, our primary focus is really uh, helping kids get off to a great start in their education. And um, it's been our passion and our mission uh, since, really, since the 70s. Um, and this kind of slide kind of talks about it here. And why we're here today is because of, uh, in 2017, uh, with the On My Way Pre-K bill, there was a small uh, set aside for a pilot program, uh, which is the in-home kindergarten readiness programming. And so I'm going to take a few minutes to go through how we came to how I'm here today. So we've been around, as I mentioned, we're a non-for-profit based out of Salt Lake City. And in 2007, the Utah Department of Education came to the Waterford Institute, and they had a challenge. And their challenge was kids, kids in rural communities were coming to school ill-prepared to be successful. They did not have the pre-literacy, pre-math, and science skills to be successful in kindergarten. If you think about Utah, 85% of it is rural. And when I talk about rural, one of the counties that we actually served is the side of Rhode Island, and they had 18 kids. So obviously providing a center for a pre-K um, is not possible. It would be illegal to put kids on the bus and so forth. So we partnered with the Utah Department of Education to provide the Waterford Early Reading and Math and Science program at home to children that didn't have access to high-quality pre-K. So in 2007, um, a couple of interesting facts about Utah is they have the lowest per pupil funding in the nation. They are a large population of residents that don't want to attend a traditional brick and mortar pre-K center. And then again, we already talked about, this is why they have five national parks or four national parks, is they're very rural. When we talk about serving students, much like the On My Way Pre-K, we're really talking about kids that are the neediest. And um, when we went to serve students in Utah in 2007, we really targeted those kids. Some challenges that kids come um, from low-income families is, one, there's the word gap. Are you guys familiar with the word gap? Okay. Hart and Risley did a study, and they monitored families. And, families with high income, middle class income, compared to low income families. And kids coming to school, there was a 30 million word gap between high income and low income families. Think about that gap as kids are getting prepared for kindergarten. Secondly, there's also a quality of language spoken gap. And so families with professional families, there is a positive to negative, a six positive words spoken to one negative word. In middle class families, it's two to one. But in families in economic distress, it's actually flipped. 
which is, think about that as we're preparing for school. There's a unique opportunity when we think about pre-K, first and second grade, and we've all heard about the pre-K studies, and like never before, we're allocating funding, um, but arguably the results haven't changed much. And so a study done by Marilyn Yeager Adams, an expert in early literacy, stated that students on average with a, a positive trajectory have about 3,000 hours of pre-literacy skills. Those that are in economic distress have about 250 hours of pre-literacy skills. Think about the inequity there. There's a unique opportunity, and if we don't catch them up early, that actually quadruples, and students will have to learn at four times the rate to catch up to their peers. I'm going to kind of fast forward here, maybe. Come on now. No. Sorry, I'm going to page up. Okay, so there we are. We're back in motion. There's that unique opportunity between the age of four up through eight that we have this opportunity to catch up kids. And that's really what we're focused on. It's not very often that research and economics come together. Uh, James Hackman, who's a, a University of Chicago economist, really focuses in on early literacy. And he states that there's a 13 to 1 return on investments. For every $13 or every $1 spent, there's a $13 return. I'd like that return as well for my 401k. <laughs> but if we look closely, the further the kids go along into school, the lower of the return on the dollar. Again, the opportunity cost of funds. What do we know about kids that are not prepared by fourth grade? They repeat grades. They require extensive interventions. Furthermore, they're less likely to graduate high school. So what we do is really help kids build the foundation that they can be successful. This is not to take away from pre-K centers, but the reality is there's just not enough funding for it, and this is where we became an opportunity. Um, so what this incorporates is we provide families with the technology, actually a Chromebook. We provide them with Wi-Fi. We provide them with our sophomore, our software. And then finally, really, the magic behind it is really is the personal care representative that works with families. It's not about just putting a device and technology in there. It's really about having them be accountable. And through the power of technology, we have the opportunity to hold families accountable. And so when we see a family is straying off task, we can actually intervene right away. We are a one-stop shop. They don't have to call Dell for the technology. They don't have to call Verizon for the Wi-Fi. It all comes to us, and we handle it. And that's really the critical piece and separates us. Families that have started with us, we have a 92% graduation rate. So families that start with us in the beginning of the school year complete the program with us. And we think that's kind of astonishing. It's really because of the personal care representatives. How do you get from 2000 to where we are today? Well, you have to have great results. First, in 2007, like I mentioned, we only served a few hundred kids. Now we're serving 15,000 students in the state of Utah through this program. It's actually one-third of all pre-K kiddos. You don't get there without great results. And over the years, kids that were coming through the program and going out of it and into kindergarten, walking into kindergarten, were coming in at a kindergarten advanced level. So that's two-thirds to three-quarters of the way through kindergarten. And in some aspects, in real words and nonsense words, we're performing at a first grade level. That kind of goes back to the research and the economics, those things coming together. What did we know? Greater literacy skills, two to three times greater growth, and again, coming to school at a kindergarten advance. That's really exciting, I mean, as you talk about the results. But let's talk about a longitudinal study. So they did a longitudinal study and tracked kids up through third, fourth grade. Well, sometimes you hear about the pre-K, there's a washout. Well, what they, we found is that there's no washout. These, reflect, these results are lasting up through fourth grade. The kids are outperforming their peers in subgroups. So they used a baseline assessment called Dibbles, and it's a standard assessment that most educators are very familiar with. And what we saw is up through first, second, and third grade is the kids that had Waterford at home are outperforming their peers up through first, second, and third gear great. The biggest gains are those kids that had the highest at-risk population. 
So we're talking about special education kids up through first, second, and third grade. Red is first grade, second grade, third grade. Minority students, first, second, and third grade. Low income students, first, second, and third grade. ELL students, first, second, and third grade. And across the board, in all subgroups, the students that had Waterford early on were outperforming their peers. Waterford as part of the Upstart program. In 2013, 2014, we received a federal grant, an I-3 grant. And basically, an I-3 grant is a, um, a multi-million dollar grant, a $12 million grant. And basically, it's a proof of concept. Now go out and take it to other states. In 2016, Senator Cruz from up by Fort Wayne became very interested in the program. And so we were able to pilot this program the 2016-2017 school, uh, school year down in New Albany Floyd. The results came back again, um, very positive kids coming out of the program at a kindergarten advanced level. If you're familiar with New Albany Floyd, New Albany Floyd is a great district for diverse demographics. You have your high income families on Floyd no Floyd's knobs, you have your urban settings down in New Albany Floyd, you have rural communities, and so it's a great district to pull from. And so it kind of validated what, what we'd shared or what we were already receiving. So when we talk about Salt Lake City in Utah, people are like, yeah, but it's a little different. And we know it's a little bit different. So we were able, through the I-3 grant, go to Mississippi, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, downtown Philadelphia, the Appalachian Mountains in Ohio. And the results came back again. So where are we going with this, Steve? Um, so in 2016-17, Governor Holcomb signed a bill that allowed, that incorporated in-home kindergarten readiness programming. And what we're looking to do is partner with this community to provide the Upstart program and possibly get your support for a November 7th um, parent introduction meeting. This program is free. It is absolutely free. There is no cost to the family. There is no cost to the community. What we need help with is identifying families and serving those families. And that's it. There's no fine print. That's it. Questions? Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That's, that's kind of where, why I wanted to have Steve come. Again, we, we see this as a possible partnership with the city. Um, you, you said you have about a spot for 150 kids left in this program statewide? True. Roughly. We are serving 350 kids across the state. Um, and we're getting there. It just takes a little bit of time. And, uh, yeah, we, we have spots for about 150 left. So, so the reason I wanted to have him come... 150 for the state? Yes. So there's a 150 across the state. Now, <laughs> it's a great program, but it's year one. And it takes a little bit. It's kind of like the too good to be true. Like when we met Senator Gentry, yeah. he kept waiting, or Senator, Mayor Gentry. Um, he kept waiting for the fine print. And there is no fine print. And I think that's the, people keep waiting for the fine print. It's too good to be true. But it's, it's what we're doing. So have you talked to Bob Taylor? I've had a little bit of conversation with Dr. Taylor. Yes. Yeah, so the reason I wanted to bring Steve to the meeting is, you know, all, of course you guys all have districts and may know families that we're really trying to have this parent or the kind of kickoff meeting, so to speak, on November 7th. So that's really the, the goal. We wanted to kind of raise awareness for that in the community. And if you know any families that may, um, or if anybody watching at home knows any families, please, I think we're planning on having it here in the council chambers on November 7th. Yeah. So that was really the goal is just to make people aware of this uh, upcoming opportunity for them. So. There are probably two or three people in Lebanon that you tell you can tell and they fill this room with people that need the program. Absolutely. So, and it's it's Principal it's, Stokes, Mrs. Solomon. Yep. Lots of other folks. Yep. And that's what we're hoping. You know, we, that uh, letter I showed up on the screen was signed uh, June fifteenth. So we're really um, normally we're twelve months in advance and have lined up families. So we're kind of scrambling at this point to fulfill that allotment of three hundred and fifty students. So we'll take them. Take them all. We've got two representatives uh, from Habitat, Habitat from Humanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions for Steve? Okay. The only thing that is, uh, they are free status students. So um, about 32K, family of four. So free status. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you very coming. much, all. You're welcome.
Okay. Um, with that, um, do I have a council's consent to move the agenda around a little bit to do the uh, food and beverage request first? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Let people come in, get out. I can okay. make a suggestion of that. Okay. Uh, with consent, then um, I'll move down to new business, and we'll have our food and beverage requests. Uh, first up is the Habitat for Humanity. I believe we have Liz with us. Liz, you want to talk about what the request was, please? Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm Liz with um, Habitat for Humanity, Executive Director, and I'm, I appreciate you listening to our request uh, from the, to the Food and Beverage Commission. Um, I think probably many of you know that we build houses. Habitat for Humanity has built. Um, almost 60 homes throughout Boone County, um, but we wanted to do more, so we have started a repair program, and we had a kickoff day uh, September 29th, and we're doing re exterior repairs on homeowner-occupied properties uh, throughout Boone County. So our kickoff day, we did four projects here in Lebanon, um, and it was awesome. We teamed up with uh, Makeda Love that issues the citations and um, got a referral from her and so it has to follow the habitat model, which there's a need. So we'll see the visual need based on the exterior of the house and projects that need to be done. And then um, they have to pay us back on a sliding scale. Um, so the payback on that day for those homeowners was anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of the actual cost of the whatever they had done. There were some decks that were there was a deck that was built, a couple stairs that were replaced, a couple um, sets of stairs. Uh, window, some painting, lots of landscape, yard cleanup. It was a hugely successful day. So what we were basically looking for is just some support for that day. And um, Amy presented last week for it, so um, we just appreciate any help you can give us. Liz, I was Liz, told how, to keep it short and sweet. So <laughs> how many how many homes in Lebanon have you guys put together in the last few years? Um, in what you mean built yeah. in the last few years? Well, I uh, let's see. For probably like seven or eight in the last three years, yeah. So, all, so. are you asking at all? I think that was a question last time. Yeah, it was all together. Uh, I didn't have an answer for you. Well, because we built nine homes in the last three years, and um, one was in Whitestown and one was in Thorntown. So the others have been here in Lebanon. So yeah. okay. a lot of them down on South Meridian. We currently have our women build over on uh, Southwest Street. Um, so yeah, we've, you know, we're definitely, this is where our primary build is. This is where most of our applicants want to live. So uh, I'm, uh, what were your expenses for that day? You remember? About $4,600. Okay. okay. So yeah. you're looking, you're looking for a little help for those. A little help for that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Whatever help. I mean, it all, it all helps. So, um, it's a new project where we had just a fantastic day. Literally felt like we could not recreate that day. It was so good. Um, and had 100 volunteers working on all these projects, and it was, it was great. We actually partnered also with the Caring Center. They have a transitional home over on uh, Main Street. I think it's Main Street. Um, I'm losing the name of the street right now, but uh, we're doing extra and some more work for them, too. So that's a house where they have, Teresa Hanners runs that house. So we've been able to partner with other agencies, too, which is awesome. We're happy to do that. So we're excited. Okay. Good. Um, the Food and Beverage Committee met with them and, and had a little bit of discussion, and uh, we discussed some more after they left, and we all agreed to uh, that uh, we'd like to make a recommendation to give them $1,000 to help support mm. uh, what they've done this year, and uh, hope that goes forward to help them even more. So that's the motion. Okay, we have a motion to uh, issue a thousand dollar grant from the Food and Beverage Fund to Habitat for Humanity. Uh, is there a second for that motion? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very right. generous. I appreciate thank you very much, Liz, and thank you for all the work you guys do. It's always thank great. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, you guys. Have a letter. Who do I give this to? Uh, Tanya. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please uh, share any information in the future, too. I'm sure we, we can have people that would love to help out. So. All right. Thank All right. You. Uh, Bye. Next up is a food and beverage request from the United Way uh, for the veterans' breakfast. Is that Reagan? Re Reagan, for you? No, oh, it's the YMCA. Oh, YMCA. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was told well, United Way. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're not having competing veterans' breakfasts, so we're good. <laughs> Just the one. <laughs> Well, thank you um, for allowing me to be here. I did meet with the Food and Beverage uh, Committee a couple of weeks ago to submit uh, our request. Uh, my name is Reagan LePage. I do serve on the um, Board of Directors for the Witham Family YMCA. 
Um, and as you know, uh, as most YMCAs are, we are a deficit YMCA, so we rely totally on uh, contributions and sponsorships from uh, community businesses and civilians. So um, part of my job um, as a board member is to seek out uh, donations and money for the cause of the YMCA. One of the programs that is close to my heart is our Veterans Day uh, program, uh, the breakfast that we do for our veterans. Um, both of my parents are uh, veterans, so it's close to my heart. Um, it's a great event. This is going to be our third year, um, and every year it's grown. Um, and so I am asking again uh, for $1,000, which was uh, so generously granted last year. Um, so I'd like to make that request again. The breakfast is uh, November 9th from 8 to 10 a.m. at the Witham Family YMCA. We hold it in our gymnasium. Um, in the past two years, we've uh, cooked and served the meal ourselves, but this year we are, do have a caterer. Uh, Cochrane's Catering is going to be providing the food for us, so we're looking to offset the expense of that. Um, Hachette will be donating books again. Uh, the Lebanon High School Pet Band will be there performing. And then our keynote speaker, last year we had uh, Joe Donnelly, and then we had the president and CEO of the YMCA, Eric Ellsworth, was there. This year we have a um, local veteran uh, from Lebanon, and his name is um, Richard Cavan II. He's a retired U.S. Navy Master Chief Petty Officer, so he'll be there uh, giving our speech for the morning. So that is my request. Okay. Dick? Yes, we, uh, the board uh, discussed uh, this, and we thought it was another good opportunity for the Food and Beverage Committee. Uh, we did sponsor it last year, uh, and she has several other sponsors to help so this year we decided we just do 750 instead of a thousand uh, we can change it if you want but that was our recommendation from the board so i you know i'd make that the motion at okay. this time we have a motion from the you're the only member of the committee here tonight too so uh, I'll second it. we have a motion and a second to support a 750 dollar grant from the food members fund for the veterans breakfast um, is there a, all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 those opposed there you go. Perfect. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you guys very much. Thanks I do appreciate day. it. Okay, that concludes what I had the food and beverage request. So we'll go back to new business with council's consent. Consent? Sure. Okay. All right, uh, with that, we have ordinance 2018-15, uh, our 2019 city budget. So I'll turn that over to Tanya to read on second reading. Thank you. Okay, I read this all at the last meeting, so I will shorten the three or four paragraphs in the beginning and just get to the meat of the ordinance but this is ordinance 2018-15 be it ordained and resolved by the lebanon city council that for the expenses of lebanon civil city for the year ending december 31st 2019 and here are the amounts the general fund is ten million seven hundred seventy seven thousand three hundred and sixty two Casino Riverboat is 93,551. Fire Pension, 313,886. Police Pension, 235,798. Local Road and Street, 268,000. Motor Vehicle Highway, $1,194,014. Park and Recreation, $1,353,000. 953 park bond 376,581 hume cap improvement is 63,000 hume cap development is 475,000 stormwater bond is 563,419 sanitation is 660,000 we have two home ruled funds one is food and beverage for 500,000 and one is for public safety lit um, local income tax and that's two million six hundred and eight thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars so the grand total is nineteen million four hundred and eighty three thousand three hundred and nine okay thank you tony uh, so that uh, is the ordinance 2018-15 has been read on second reading um, we'll open this up for public comment as well too uh, I will say we're very proud through the workshops we were able to keep, uh, we plan to keep the tax rate exactly the same, frozen, as what it's been since 2016. 
So appreciate all the council's hard work on that. Uh, we're also making significant investments in our community as well, too. So um, any public comment concerning the 2019 budget, please step forward. Okay. Nope. Any uh, discussion um, among council of concerning the ordinance 2018-15? Not for me. Other than just to point out and reiterate what you said, um, it's, it's a pretty good budget. Um, we have a very low tax rate. It may even be too low for what we're trying to do, but that's a discussion for another time. But uh, uh, I think this body has done a pretty good job of, of keeping things under control in an era where maybe some places aren't doing that. Um, and uh, I'd just like to commend everybody that I think it's a pretty good budget. Okay. Thank you, Brent. Any oh, I have. <laughs> I have to say, I actually lost my train of thought in the middle of that. I thought it was interesting. We needed to point out that um, we had uh, Umball engineer or Umball uh, financial uh, financial in, and they uh, let us know that it takes twelve million dollars of new assessed valuation to add a hundred thousand dollars to our budget, approximately. So you see all the growth around Lebanon. We ought to think we've got tax dollars. You know that uh, we're just flowing like crazy. That's not true. Um, because our tax rate is is so uh, low and competitive um, it, it's amazing how much growth we need to see before we can really raise those budgets so uh, in case folks are thinking well look at all the growth around town we ought to you know our budget ought to be able to, to increase and do all kinds of things we can't do that so I will also say too on law was said we're in excellent financial shape Absolutely. as well too. We have very healthy reserves so we uh, we've been doing a great job maintaining that over the time as well too so uh, I think they were actually trying to tell us that we needed to spend more money on some things. So, but that's all right. Uh, I, I would like to I would like to congra congratulate the department heads, who really do a good job of keeping their budgets in check, because that allows us to look good up here. So it's really the department heads doing the heavy lifting. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> and the one in the back. All right. Uh, any other comment from either council or public? Okay. With that, would consider a motion concerning ordinance 2018-15. I move that we approve ordinance 2018-15, the city budget. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Ordinance 2018-15 passed unanimously. Thank you, council. And now we'll move on to ordinance 2018-16, which is I'm sure the employees are very interested in, uh, salaries of certain employees. Right. This is ordinance 2018-16, an ordinance fixing the salaries of certain employees of the city of Lebanon, Indiana, beginning January 1st, 2019. Um, let me see what I can see. Following statement of salaries is the base pay for the positions listed. Full-time employees of the City of Lebanon receive longevity pay at a rate of $75 per year of service. Longevity pay begins after the first full year of service and does not include the current year of service when calculating the amount for each employee. If that employee transfers to a vacated position, the amount of the salary would be no more than that amount listed in said ordinance plus the longevity of the employee transferring to the vacancy. So beginning January 1, 2019, the department totals are as follows. Motor Vehicle Department is $409,855. Parks Department is $589,751. The above rates apply to a 40-hour work week. However, when extreme emergencies arise requiring the above-named employees to work for more than 40 hours per week as intended, they shall be compensated according to the Federal Labor Standards Act and the city's overtime policy. This section does not apply to department heads. Planning Department, $344,029. The Historic Commission, $6,000. Police Department, $2,228,500. Fire Department, $1,525,500. Clerk Treasurer's Office, $116,321. The Mayor's Office, $37,153. Community Development, $64,156. Engineering Department, 74,263. 
The annual salaries of the following board members shall be the Board of Works is $3,600. That's for two members. The other two are paid from stormwater. Uh, the annual salaries, I'm sorry, City Plan Commission is $9,600. Board of Zoning Appeals is $6,000. Park Board is $3,600. Plan Commission, Zoning, and Park Board members are only compensated for regularly scheduled meetings they attend. This ordinance shall take effect January 1st, 2019. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. You're welcome. Now that the ordinance has been read, any initial comments from council? No, sir. Any public comments concerning the ordinance? Okay. Seeing none, any further discussion from council? No, sir. Okay. With that, I would entertain a motion concerning ordinance 2018-16. I'll make a motion we approve ordinance 2018-16, the salaries for certain employees. We have a motion to approve 2018-16. Um, all those fair, or is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those fair say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Ordinance passed unanimously. Thank you, council. And now on to ordinance 2018-17, which is salaries of elected officials. Okay, this is the last one. Ordinance 2018-17, fixing the salaries of elected officials of the City of Lebanon beginning January 1, 2019. 2019. <clears throat> the maximum salaries of the following elected officials of the City of Lebanon beginning January 1, 2019 are as follows. Mayor, 51,766. Clerk, Treasurer, 55,298. Common Council, 37,853. That's for all seven members. In addition to the funds paid by the civil city, as set out in Section 2 above, the following elected and appointed officers are to be paid from funds from the municipal utility are as follows. The Mayor, $26,866. Clerk Treasurer, $15,360 and Deputy Clerk Treasurer 26,995. This ordinance shall take effect January 1st, 2019. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. Any public comment concerning Ordinance 2018-17? Any council discussion concerning Ordinance 2018-17? No, sir. Okay. Well, seeing none, would you entertain a motion? I make a motion we pass Ordinance 2018-17. We have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2018-17. Is there a second? Motion and a second. All those here say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Ordinance 2018-17 passed unanimously. Thank you, Council. Welcome. All right. Uh, that concludes what I have for old business. Is there anything from the Council for old business? Okay. Then we'll move on to new business. Uh, first item I have here, this is a little out of order. This has been delayed a little bit, but is Ordinance 2018-13, which is the Elmwood Neighborhood Voluntary Annexation. Um, I'll have Ben Bontrager uh, introduce that for us. Good evening, council members. We, I think we've talked about this a couple of times. Uh, just one quick update. Uh, that, that last home that uh, I had indicated last time, we did not have signed a petition. We do have an, a petition annexation signed by that homeowner now. So we do have the entirety of Elmwood with a voluntary petition for annexation. So we, we did uh, get over that hurdle. Uh, she was on vacation, but we drove down to Speedway today to get her to sign it. So uh, we did get that. So uh, just a quick recap. This is, uh, you know, the Elmwood subdivision. They approached us about being annexed to the city of Lebanon. Uh, the major discussion that we've had at this point is about maintenance of road and bridge. Um, and I know that was a discussion we had last time. So. If there's any additional questions about that, we'll be happy to try to answer any of those. Otherwise, uh, you know, this is this is a, the first we're ready for the first reading in the public hearing tonight. Um, ben, they had a homeowner association, didn't they? Yes. Did they? Okay. Did they have any funds available to help up grade the street or? They, they just recently the repaved the, or anything? They just recently repaved the street. I don't remember how long ago it was, but it was just in the last couple years, I believe. So I, I don't know what funds they have now, but um, but the, they did just repave the street just recently. Ben, what is the status of the bridge as far as who's responsible for what? I know that question came up last time, and I know there was some uh, to Mr. Shine's office. Uh, so right now it is a private street. 
Um, upon annexation, we intend to dedicate right of way so it would become public right of way, both the street and the bridge. Depending on the interpretation on the bridge, I don't know if Chris has got some updates on that. Yeah, I appreciate it, Ben. Um, so we're going to be finalizing our take uh, legal stance on uh, who's responsible overall for the bridge. We'll have that to uh, the council and everybody for review prior to second reading for sure. You lean a certain way on it yet? <laughs> Initial analysis indicates it would be the county. Since there is uh, the cumulative, cumulative fund set up, it would be, uh, as it looks right now, um, the county's responsibility, but we're just running all the traps, making sure that all the analysis is complete before si final sign off by Rob. Okay. Thank you. Kim? I'll just comment that I was up at uh, uh, County Bridge Conference uh, last week up at Purdue and spoke with several colleagues about the, the issue and explained everything about it. And uh, uh, there, it was, it was funny because I had several that are basically, they all agreed that even though it is a private street or a private subdivision, it's still a public street. The public uses it. Mm -hmm. And so really the, being it was a public street, it was a bridge that was over, you know, handled public traffic. Yeah. So and they think that even now before we even accept the right of way. They, yeah, and so their their even their agreement was that that was counties to really maintain. So I, you know, I don't know, be something we'll have to go through. Well, and we do have a report that says it'll fail in zero to five years. So at some point, the information is on our side, and it's worth it's worth the negotiation discussion with the the county about it. So yeah, I yeah at this point, I I see no reason for us to put any funds towards the bridge at this time. We take, may have to you want to take the hard have a little stance, discussion <laughs> letter to letter back from attorney to attorney, but uh, you know, I think I think that's all I'll say on so. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Any further comment? No sir. Okay. Uh, so this time then I will open the public hearing uh, on ordinance twenty eighteen dash one three. if you have any questions, comments, concerns want to tell us hello feel free to step forward mayor i'd like to make just a, sure. a couple more comments for for the uh, council uh, this happens quite often across the state of indiana in counties municipalities and it sometimes ends up that the county uh, uh, or the municipality will take it in or the county has a private neighborhood and they want to be annexed uh, nine times out of ten, the county does not accept it. And the reason they don't accept it is because it's not to, the road was built not to county standards. Uh, we probably have that same option, but it's a pretty private little neighborhood that not too many people are going back there unless you're a friend of the guest or you're out sightseeing on a Sunday afternoon and want to drive through the neighborhood to look at people. But other than that, uh, sometimes they're taken in by cities uh, by just as is and but most of the time they're not because they want them to bring them up to, to whatever standard was it's kind of hard to do that with this one because you got a road and a bridge and involved it so well forth, so. and to clarify too Ben we are having them dedicate right-of-way to us as well yes right yes currently yes and also giving us enough right away if we wanted to, we could expand, we could widen the road if we chose to, correct? Correct. Okay. And we, and all the homeowners agreed to that and we're fine. Yes. And we're, we're yes. all ready furnishing water and sewer and. Yeah, we're, all the utilities are provided. And utilities. By right now. Everything, we're already doing that. And yes. Now they'll get city trash and. City uh, correct. Yeah, they don't get city trash currently. They'll get city trash and city police. And, so forth so and and frankly right i mean if there was an, an emergency in elmwood i mean we are the we are yeah. going to be responding right we're Perfect. the most we're the closest jurisdiction you know sure. earlier board of works we had our a contract we had with the homeowner association to pick up their leaves right so it kind of streamlines a couple of different things for us too that just makes it official i mean they kind of have function as city residents but they have by just technicality have not been so i think it's in our best long-term interest to uh, move forward with it but uh, public hearing is still open, so if anyone else wants to step forward. Okay, then at this time I will close the public hearing on uh, Ordinance 2018-13.
Thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Any uh, further comments? Oh, actually, I'll have, uh, I'll have um, Chris read the ordinance now. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So again, this is an ordinance with respect to annexing certain territory to the City of Lebanon. So the City of Lebanon Common Council has the authority and desires to annex lands into the municipality. 100% of the owners of the parcels proposed for this annexation, as identified in Exhibit A and B to this ordinance, have filed voluntary position with the Council. The City of Lebanon Advisory Plan Commission held a public hearing on July 16, 2018. That commission forwarded docket 18-28 to this council with a favorable recommendation to assign the single family residential SF2 zoning classification for the annexation area. The council has conducted a public hearing on September 10, 2018. Council has adopted a fiscal plan for the annexation of the annexation area. The annexation area meets the contiguity requirements, contiguity, excuse me, requirements of the Indiana Code. The council now finds that the statutory criteria for annexation has been met. So if ordained by the council, uh, this ordinance would do a few things. Number one, the area would be annexed. The area would be assigned to council district number four. The annexation area would be assigned to single family residential SF2 zoning reclassification. And the ordinance would be in full force and effect upon its passage by the council, its publication, and upon the passage of the applicable 30 day waiting period all is provided by the laws of the state of Indiana. Okay, thank you, Chris. Who's District 4 again? Mine. But you're Dick? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a qu question? Yeah. Uh, uh, two weeks we move forward and we accept this annexation. Uh, that'll probably do away with that agreement we just made with Elmwood for trash pickup, wouldn't it? Um, I mean, they'll be in the city then. I believe there's a waiting period, though. So yes, there would be a waiting period. 30-day uh, 30 30. waiting period? Yeah, so that's no. there was a 30 day waiting period, so that's why we still did the agreement. So we're gonna we're gonna milk it a little bit one more season on the leaves from them. So <laughs> yeah, because they would take us probably by the end of the leaf season by then. So okay, uh, any further questions discussion from council? No sir. Okay, ordinance uh, 2018-13 that now has been read on first reading. Uh, we will take that up at our next meeting on November 13th. Um, we'll also have the fiscal plan um, resolution at that time as well. Okay, uh, next item up is Ordinance 2018-18, which is the Boone County Animal Control Ordinance. Um, I'll have uh, Chris read this one first, and then we'll have a discussion about it. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Again, this is uh, ordinance is going to ratify the Boone County Animal Control Ordinance. On June 4, 2018, the Boone County Board of Commissioners adopted Ordinance 2018-2. That ordinance was entitled an ordinance repealing and replacing Boone County Code sections related to animal control. The provisions of the county ordinance apply within the municipal limits of the city of Lebanon, unless or until the city adopts an ordinance prohibiting the enforcement of that county ordinance. The city council for the city of Lebanon should it desire to state its agreement with the county ordinance concerning animal control. Although not required to do so, the city of Lebanon, if it were to pass ordinance, would desire to ratify the county ordinance and state that it will be in full force and effect within the municipal boundaries of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if it was ordained by this council, Boone County Ordinance 2018-02, which is attached, I won't read it in a length, it's uh, a bit lengthy, but it's attached here to as Exhibit 1, and all the terms contained therein would be ratified as being in full force and effect within the boundaries of the city of Lebanon. Thank you, Chris. So to kind of give you a little bit of history, um, this was an ordinance that was discussed at length uh, by the county commissioners. Um, again, when they adopted it, it, it does currently apply to us. Um, we did receive a letter from the sheriff's department um, asking us if we were planning on adopting uh, the ordinance or at least something that ratified it. Um, apparently, the animal control made roughly 700 calls related to animal control um, within the city limits in 2018. So this is something that is uh, being addressed currently. Um, we did pay our $10,000 towards the animal control. Um, we paid that invoice from them. So we are currently participating with them. Um, at this time, this, is, this ordinance strictly just ratifies what was currently um, in the Boone County Ordinance. However, um, this was similar to what Whitestown did. Um, however, if we chose to, we could do a deeper dive on this and, and rework this. Um, I'm open to that. Again, this was just a, this was the kind of 
the most straightforward path on it. However, if we feel that there needs to be more discussion um, and maybe make it more um, shaped towards us, we're open to hear that, that feedback from council as well too. So just wanted to bring that up. Well, that's my first concern is uh, there's a lot of stuff here that uh, I think we need to consider if that's the right fit for Lebanon. And the bottom line is it's already in force anyway. So uh, I don't understand why we have to pass this. I suppose we have to pass ratifying the laws of theft and robbery and all that too if, if we follow that same thing. So um, my position is I think we need to table it and think about it a little bit. And that essentially doesn't change anything. So the um, I would say one thing that would change if we did adopt it is it would allow our officers to write. I don't know if we do already, Tyson. I mean, maybe you could help us with how we enforce this currently. The uh, main case that we deal with are barking dogs and loose dogs. Uh, we've always decided them on our local ordinances as is now. We've not used the county ordinances. Uh, any other type of things that the ordinance covers, such as livestock, we've turned over to the Planning Commission, uh, such as chickens. But um, currently, we're, we still just cite for barking or loose dogs. But as far as uh, neglect and cruelty, there's state laws that address that, right? That is correct. Because again, Anything I go like back that, to my. We would take a case report and turn it over to the Boone County Prosecutor's Office, yeah. such as cruelty to a vertebrate animal. I, I kind of go back to in 26 years as a police officer, I never thought, boy, I need I need more laws to enforce this. We either made the case, you know, the the laws were in place. So that that's that's my skepticism. And let me also highlight that there's nobody up here that supports animal cruelty and neglect. I just want to make sure that we're not just adding regulatory burden without actually solving problems on the ground. Well, and that's why I think with this version of it where it's just a ordinance to ratify, it's not, since it already is in effect, right, we're just saying, we're just acknowledging that it is in effect. It's not a, we're not rewriting our current local ordinances, we're not writing our code. It's, they still have this ordinance would apply to us. It's just us saying we, we recognize that the county passes ordinance. And, and I understand it. My counter argument would be then why do we do anything? <laughs> we can just let it stand. So, uh, again, that, that's the, the, the request came from the sheriff to say, I understand. We, we want you to ratify it. I so understand. I, so does this, does this overwrite our local ordinances for being, a, being the county would be taking over the municipalities? This would probably overwrite what we have, wouldn't it? Well, this is already in effect. Do I? This is already in effect? That sounded like a legal question to me, Dick. So, I, cool. Chris? I would want to look into that more fully, uh, but it sounds like this is not on the books right now within the city, right? I mean, it's... Uh, the way it was drafted is that it says it's in full force and effect in the municipalities. Right. I would want to get back to you on that before the next reading. Another good reason to table it. Again, just wanted to... It's on first reading, right? We don't have to take action tonight on it. It's been read now, so we can have... Continue discussion about it if we want to figure out what the, the best path forward is on it. Again, this request right, came from the sheriff's office. Just wanted to pass it along to, to council. Sure. So. And again, I want to highlight if, if we can make the world a better place, I'm all for that. I just want to make sure we're not uh, throwing paper at something and that doesn't really mean anything. Okay. Any comments from this side, guys? No, sir. You good? Any public comment concerning this? Okay. Ordinance 2018-18 uh, has been read on uh, first reading. We'll continue to discuss or table at our next meeting. All right, uh, next up is resolution 2018-38, which is a rainy day transfer. Okay, this is a resolution transferring funds from the city general fund to the rainy day fund. The council has previously established a rainy day fund pursuant to IC code 36185-1 and states the council may transfer unused and unencumbered funds into a rainy day fund by resolution, whereas the council desires to transfer $500,000 from city general to rainy day fund and whereas the amount to be transferred as delineated above is less than 10% of the city's annual budget and is not being transferred to fund debt service. 
be it resolved and adopted by the City Council for Lebanon, Indiana, the amount to be transferred, which is $500,000, from Fund 101, City General, to Fund 270, Rainy Day. Uh, the Lebanon Clerk Treasurer is authorized to transfer said funds and take such actions necessary to comply with this resolution. Okay. Uh, remind me the balances on what we're doing, the current general fund balance? Um, we. I don't have the balance okay. right here in front of me. Um, the three years ago, we transferred about eight hundred and seventy-three thousand, and with the help of Umball, we take a look at this. Like I said, it can't be more than ten percent of our city's annual budget. Um, we looked at it last year. Keith Campbell, Councilman Campbell, it's is always looking to see if we can replenish that rainy day fund because once we use that money, it's gone. Um, there is no, there's no incoming funds unless we're doing what we're doing right now. So okay. that's where and why we do this. Okay. Any further discussion from council? No, sir. Any public comment concerning resolution 2018-38? Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion concerning Resolution 2018-38. I will move we pass Resolution 2018-38. We have a motion to adopt Resolution 2018-38. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. That resolution passed unanimously. Thank you, Council. All right. That concludes what I have for new business. Um, is there anything from Council for new business? No, sir. Okay. Uh, then we'll move on to the claims and we entertain a motion. Make a motion we pay the claims. We have a motion to pay the claims. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Any announcements uh, for the discussion from council? My bad. Somebody's waving at her. Oh, please. Oh. Yes. Yep. Tracy has one. Two of them. Mayor, council, thank you very much. I have a couple of things that I wanted to share with you this evening. Um, Lebanon Utilities is really pleased to announce that we've created a disaster recovery program. Uh, this program involved an in-depth look into every utility to find out what we truly need to keep the operations going during an emergency situation. So what types of emergencies would you ask? Any. We actually did an in-depth study on it, over 25 different scenarios depending on, on which utility it was, to see what do we need to do to keep going. And we're pleased to announce that we narrowed these uh, scenarios down to the most likely and the most critical type of uh, scenarios. Finally, with all the information that we uh, put together, now this took a lot of time, a lot of effort with all of our departments. And so what we did is we finally gathered all the information to respond to any of these issues, and we located that information into a secure online um, document location. What that means is um, if we lose power, if we lose anything, a natural disaster, if we can get to the Internet, if we can get someplace else, if we can get to the Internet, we can get to these documents. These documents actually show us what we need to do to restore, to repair, who we need to contact, who we need to, um, let's say that we have certain vendors that we work with, because we do. Um, it has all their contact information so that we can actually contact them very quickly and get the information, get things coming so that we can be part of those first responders. Now, obviously, we're not first responding like, like our fire and police, but it's our job. It's essential services, and it's our job to make sure that we keep the, the lights on, we keep the water flowing, and we take care of the issues. This is just something I really want to let you know that we've gone through this process and that we're really excited about it. And so um, the next piece that I wanted to say is, you know, Talking about disaster recovery, um, last week we had sent four line workers down to Tallahassee, Florida, 
after Hurricane Michael. Nick Elliott, Matt Myhill, Perry Shoemaker, and Kyle Larsh drove down to Tallahassee as a part of the IMEA Mutual Aid Program and with other utilities in Indiana, they all gathered in the same location, they all worked together, and they restored power. And I think that's pretty neat that we have people that are willing to do this, and we as a city are willing to send our people to help. I think the really interesting part for me is that it wouldn't have mattered what department it was. You know, yes, these were our linemen, but you take our water workers, you take our wastewater workers, it wouldn't matter. Any of them would go down and, and get the same reports coming back of what a great job they did, how courteous they are, how helpful they are, um, sometimes having to sleep in your truck because there's no power for the hotel, you can't, there's no place to stay. You know, those things happen when you're trying to do disaster recovery. They do their best with mutual aid to make sure they take care of our, our guys. They do feed them. They do give them, you know, food, water, and all that. But, boy, sometimes there's just not a place to sleep. You know, so on 16 hours, off 8. On 16 hours, off 8. And that's what these guys did. And I thought they should get this recognition to you that that is the type of people that we have in our utility. Thank nice, you. nice job. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Trace. Oh, sorry. How many, how many uh, linemen were down there from other places? Like the total number, there were thousands, weren't there? Thousands. Like I think it was twenty eight hundred. Uh, like the, the, you army. Know, from, from from multiple locations. Yes. Just that, and we're talking just in that area, you know, in the Panhandle area. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's it's amazing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you much. your time. Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any uh, other announcements or discussion, from Council? No, sir. See, this is where I was going to address any public comment concerning our proceedings. Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Mm -hmm. All right. We are adjourned. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, November 13th, in honor of uh, Veterans Day. So Tuesday, November 13th at 7.50 p.m. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.